I had this idea that just wouldn't go away. We see the words net zero home, net zero by 2050, and similar terms in the green industry. But what does that all really mean? A net zero home technically means that you make as much power as you use, and you need to produce it from renewable energy sources. I love the few net zero homes I've seen online and in person, but the fact is they are unaffordable for most people in this country, and I wanted to try to do something about that. This is the story of my three-year journey where I did a nine-month fix and flip net zero renovation where efficiency and solar energy powered both the house and the electric car. It then became a short-term rental for a little over two years and I sold it for a nice profit. It was a ton of work filled with low lows, a little bit of fun, and overall feeling like money drains from your wallet like... but I wouldn't give up the experience for the world. I learned so much and now I can share it with you. So let's jump in. Here's how the story goes. To get started, I did a lot of research on different markets and I wanted to have a really good fit so that the average homeowner uh, could be able to afford this when it was finished. So I looked at a lot of markets. I toured about 40 homes in North Carolina specifically and Florida and ultimately decided to go back to my hometown near Fort Myers, Florida in Cape Coral to do this. I ended up buying a 3 to 1800 square foot home in Florida and you can see with these initial walkthrough videos that it was pretty outdated. It's uh, built in 1984. It's wood frame construction 2x4 and it was uh, pretty dark and digi overall. To get started I spent about a month in the planning phase and I mapped out the whole house down to the inch and you could see the 10-year ROI spreadsheets along with the sustainability spreadsheets that I made to account for what would actually get this house to net zero as cheaply as possible. So after all the planning and a bit of procrastination, it was time to dive in. But first things first, we had to remove some bees. There were thousands of bees in the water meter out in the front yard and I found a beekeeper to come take them away. First up, I decided to tackle the garage renovation and I was lucky enough to meet Adam, who I found on Thumbtack, and he's a journeyman drywaller. He helped me with about half the house and we worked side by side for much of the project. After cleaning out the whole garage and prepping it, we got started with patching all the walls and you can see we were removing the popcorn in the ceiling. There was a lot of old drywall hanging down, so tons of repairs over a week or two just to get the drywall prepped for prime and paint. After masking off the floor, we got to painting, and as you can see, it's looking pretty much like new. And to cap it off, I added a quiet Wi-Fi garage opener as well. To get started with the energy efficiency work, we first needed to see how leaky the house was and also how leaky the ductwork was. So I hired a local company, a great guy named Bud, who's been doing efficiency work for 35 years. And he was a great mentor on the project for my first one. You can see we're covering the, the duct registers, we're running the duct blaster test and pretty much testing the leakage in every area of the house. It's hard to tell in the video, but here's what a blower door test sounds like when it's on. We also went around the house with this infrared camera and that can show us the leaks and the heat coming in as the blower door is going in real time on camera. So this is a great tool to use for energy efficiency. The house actually scored pretty well at a 6.8 ACH50, which is not too bad for an 80s regular house and a good starting point to really do some air sealing and tighten up the building envelope. I was excited about the next project because replacing a regular hot water heater with a heat pump hot water heater is some of the biggest energy savings you'll get when doing a project like this. And in my case, I saved about $400 a year just by replacing the water heater. Unfortunately, the guy I hired sold me a busted expansion tank and didn't know that we had to run the drain line out with a heat pump hot water heater. So those were some snags that we had to take care of. Unfortunately, I never heard back from the guy, so I had to hire somebody else to fix it, and that's par for the course with renovations. Newer heat pump models are usually a little bit quieter, but here you can listen to what it sounds like when it's on. Next up was the full kitchen renovation project. This was a big one. This took about three to four weeks. And as you can see, we had a lot to do here. 
This is Terry, and I was lucky enough to find him as well. He was a jack-of-all-trades contractor, and he and I worked side-by-side side to do the full kitchen together. You can see the demo we did, and then all the mold on the incorrectly installed vapor barrier, so we had to remove that. We demoed everything, including the old soffit that was there, so we could install tall cabinets, and that way everything would fit into a typical eight-foot tall ceiling. I also wanted to mention that I was living in this house during this renovation, and while renovations can look a lot more clean and professional than this, we were just trying to power through it, and it still takes a big mental toll on you. So if you're looking at doing something like this yourself, do take that into consideration. You can bet I was pretty happy when it was time to seal everything back up. So this is us installing new drywall and texturing everything. We got the cabinets delivered and put them in in a day or two. And finally, the kitchens come together. In between projects, I wanted to take down the wall in the living room to open things up. So this was a fun Friday night. Next up was matching some of the existing luxury vinyl plank flooring that was in basically half of the living room. And I wanted to replace the carpet in the other half. One of the issues here was that the area where the carpet was was actually lower because there was still tile in the kitchen and dining room where the previous owners had put the LVP over top of. So our best idea at the time was to use cement board and then some self-leveling concrete to try to level it out. In the end, it worked okay. No one's ever said anything or really noticed, but I've since learned that the proper way to do it in the future is to scrape and get down to the foundation on every area you want to put new flooring in so that it's all properly level. And I found a great father-son team from Brazil. They absolutely crushed this project in one day and you'll see the results in the reveal at the end of the video. Another satisfying day was having the countertops delivered and installed and then Terry was back to put in the marble backsplash in the kitchen. In between all this, I installed an Emporia View energy monitor, which allows you to track every single circuit in terms of power in real time for what you're using in the house. Another big project was painting the inside of the house. I pretty much did this myself to save money, and it took maybe one or two weeks in total. I painted everything white to give it a real modern feel and to open up the space. And with the old green and brown walls, it really made a big difference. And for a little bit different custom shelving, we just used two by sixes and stained them. The next big project was to replace all the original windows and doors from 1984. They were single pane, they were leaky, not secure. And to solve for both energy efficiency, home value and hurricane issues, it was time to replace everything with hurricane impact doors and windows. Like most people, I started out getting quotes from the retail window installation companies and just kept getting sticker shock and i'll do a whole separate video on how i was able to get windows installed for about half the price of retail but needless to say i was pretty happy that i could make it fit into the budget after a three month wait for the delivery we were finally able to start the install to replace the windows the installers had to cut the stucco around the frame and you can see one problem we ran into was the incredible mold and water damage that the leaky windows had caused inside the walls the solution for that was cutting all the way down the stucco and then replacing the old rotted wood with new plywood and then stuccoing over it. It was a lot of money, time, and effort for this project, but ultimately having Energy Star Hurricane Impact windows and doors was a game changer for the whole house. To be energy efficient, having the peace of mind when the storms come in, and then also super quiet, very efficient, I mean, so many benefits to these kind of windows. In between all the projects, I had Terry come back to replace all the doors in the house. That included a new steel door in the garage, all the bedroom doors, and we added a door between the master bedroom and the master bath. I wanted to add a bit of a wow factor in the master bath, so I hired a company to build a rain shower. This was another three and a half week project and cost about maybe $4,000 in total, but I think it was well worth it. Like all the other projects in the house, I had designed and picked up the material myself, and then I was just hiring and paying for the labor. Overall, they did a pretty good job, even though it dragged on for a bit over three or four weeks. But you could see we built an inset with the leftover marble tile from the kitchen backsplash, and his daughter was there helping. I'm not sure if she's of legal working age, but again, it's Florida, so who knows? Another great project was installing a new fence, and I chose white modern vinyl fence. It provided a lot of privacy and really looked nice, but as you'll see later in the video, when the hurricane came through, it became a real problem. 
Now, after all the energy efficiency work was done and the plan was in place, it was time to install solar. And this is done last. There's so much to talk about with proper solar design, making sure you get the right system for your house and making sure you get the right price. I'm gonna cover those in a lot of other videos. I've been designing solar for years, so I knew pretty much exactly what the house needed in terms of the calculations, and I found a great company to work with. This was a 9.24 kilowatt system, and the install only took about a couple days. Extremely professional, and I was super happy to get it installed. The one snag we had, which is always unforeseen on these projects, is when the installer was climbing through the attic to install the electrical lines, he fell through the master bedroom ceiling. So luckily, Adam was there on site, and the solar company paid him to patch up the roof, and all was good. You can see each of the 385 watt mission solar panels going up and we used Enphase IQ7 Plus microinverters, which tuck nicely underneath the panels themselves. Again, this was really exciting when I was attempting my first net zero experiment. And you can see here, we're replacing the old analog meter with a new net meter so that the meter can literally spin backwards with solar and that sort of caps off the end of the solar project. It was fun to see that a year later, the solar and efficiency combined ended up powering the whole house and the electric car fully. And I actually got an $8 check back at the end of the year from the utility company. Next up was tackling the backyard. And the previous owner was a boat maintenance technician. And he ended up filling the whole backyard with gravel because he parked a bunch of boats there. So I hired a couple guys off of Craigslist to remove all the gravel and we actually trailered it over to my parents' house to fill in the driveway. We installed four posts so I could hang a hammock and a shade sail in the middle. And then one Saturday morning, I ended up DIYing the irrigation system and digging up the backyard while the gravel was removed. I expanded the irrigation system because I wanted to add sod over most of the backyard. And then we also, added a bunch of native plants from the house I grew up in around the perimeter to kind of round out the look and feel of the backyard. Here you can see the topsoils getting delivered and the same guys helped fill that in where we removed the gravel. Next up was the sod delivery and I also wanted to add a little bit of a beachy vibe so I found some beach sand on Craigslist and had that delivered as well. Again on Craigslist I found another couple who was able to paint the house. And so we did that in the middle of the backyard project. And you can see here at night, I added some string lights and it kind of came together nicely. To clean up the front yard a bit, we also got the mold off the driveway. And this is my dad having fun with the pressure washer. Going back to energy efficiency, I wanted to cover a couple of the projects that made a big difference. This is Bud again and we are sealing around the register boots for the HVAC system because it's allowing air from the attic to infiltrate so we're sealing those up there was also a soffit above the master bedroom where it was a huge leak into the attic so i sealed that up added lights and you can see how it turned out with the goal of having the highest return on investment for money spent on this house the calculations showed that replacing insulation or the hvac system actually did not make sense versus a lot of the other projects and i'll cover this in other videos in the future but for many reasons, I did skip those two big ticket items. Another little fun project I wanted to do was install a wall tablet system that showed the apps for the solar and the Emporia energy monitor. So you can see I installed that in the wall here next to the smart thermostat. To cover water savings a little bit and to save the pipes inside the house, we installed a water pressure regulator. This is me installing a 60 amp breaker for the level two electric car charger that was about 15 feet away on the wall. And at least with the Tesla Model 3, for instance, the level two allows you to charge at about 30 miles per hour versus four or five miles per hour with the regular outlet. So here we are. This is after nine months of planning and work, and it was such a crazy project, but rewarding at the same time. It was also so nice to have the house cleaned up and living in it feeling like a real home instead of living in a project, which took an incredible toll on me mentally, especially when this was through the pandemic. But the project got done, and as you can see, I think it turned out pretty nice. So let's talk numbers. As the title says, I spent just shy of $300,000. The total ended up being 298,000, and the project ended in early 2021. The house itself at the time was $200,000. It was pretty run down in many ways. 
needed a lot of updating. And it was also bought in 2020 before the real estate boom kind of kicked in with the pandemic. But if we were to compare it nowadays, it would run about a third higher. So figure low 300s for the same exact starting point. So add maybe $100,000 or a little bit more to the starting price if you were to do that now. The complete renovation, including the energy efficiency and the solar system was $95,000. I did half the work myself. This was the first time I did much of anything in regards to renovations, but it just shows you that it's totally possible and it keeps it quite affordable. After the work was completed, I went for a refinance and at the time interest rates were still really low and I was able to get a 2.99% loan on the new value of the home and cash out a little bit from the cash that I had put in for the renovation. The energy efficiency work and the solar system saves and or produces about $2,000 per year after hookup fees and everything else when you factor in the electric car. And there's so many fun facts that I could share about the energy efficiency side and renewable side of this project, but I'll have to do those in future videos. As crazy as this project was, I was somehow addicted to this process at this point. And so I did another project. I moved up to St. Petersburg, Florida, and this then turned into a short-term net zero rental. I put it on Zillow and it rented out sight unseen to a nice couple in Indiana who had a solar home and a Mach-E Ford electric car. And it was a done deal when they saw the listing. And so I rented it out for $27.50 a month furnished. And that's what started the successful real estate investing side of this project. In Florida, you can also get about double the rent through the winter months because all the snowbirds come down. And so I had timed the leases so that I was able to capitalize on that as well through the winter. And I had some great families living in there as well. So overall, it was a big success, but like with many real estate investments, not everything goes perfectly. And that brings us to As you may remember seeing in the news, this storm absolutely devastated the area. Virtually no home was safe and the destruction is hard to put into words. While the front and backyard had a ton of damage, the structure itself had very little damage, which I was actually shocked by. I wanted to mention a few things in regards to hurricane resilience that I had done or planned for in case this happened and it ended up paying off in spades. And that is, a newer roof with hurricane rated shingles, hurricane ties and straps to hold the roof to the walls so that it doesn't blow off, hurricane windows as you saw earlier, and the solar system was actually perfect. The power was off for two weeks and flipped right back on when the power came on from the utility line and I was completely over the moon about that one. I ended up repairing the damage in the yard for about a few thousand dollars and I kept it as a rental for a little bit longer. For many reasons, including to reinvest in the company here to keep it growing, I decided to sell it in early 2023. It was a nice exit and I could use the funds to invest in my second net zero renovation up in St. Petersburg, where I was basically doing the same thing again. So look out for that video in the future. That is a 1950s typical Florida brick home and it actually had a lot more challenges than this one, even though this is my second time doing it. So that's it. That was a three year net zero home renovation journey. Feel free to leave your questions below and I'll include a link to the case study in the notes, which goes to the blog where I have a lot more pictures and numbers from the same project. Again, look out for the second project coming up and thanks so much for watching.